Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Director, for being here today. I know it's been a, a very long day, busy day on Capitol Hill, and also I want to apologize in advance if there's any uh, repetitive questions uh, from me. Uh, but I have to ask, uh, given that our sitting president resigned from the campaign on Sunday and the Secret Service Director resigned yesterday, you don't plan on resigning anytime soon, do you, sir? No, sir. <laughs> good, good to go. Uh, earlier today, uh, you told this committee that you recovered eight bullet cartridges from the roof next to the shooter. And given that testimony, I have two questions for you. Uh, how many shots were fired at President Trump and how many shots were fired in total of the entire day? I know I keep hearing eight, but were there any more that, that were unaccounted for? Uh, the best information I have right now is eight shots. Uh, as to the sequence, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure I have that sitting here right now. As I said to the chairman, I'm going to go back to my team and see if, if we've got that nailed down yet. And if we have, I'm happy to share it with, with you and the rest of the committee. Please do, sir. Thank you very much for that. Uh, you also mentioned that, that the shooter used encrypted messages to, uh, to, to communicate. Uh, specifically, do you know what apps or what, what apps that he was using to communicate, and can you confirm if he was communicating with any foreign nationals through the encrypted messages? So as to the names of the apps, I don't have that uh, right here in front of me. Um, as far as um, communicating with any foreign actors, um, I'll say two things. One, we haven't, as I, I think I've testified before, we have not, uh, at the moment at least, identified any accomplices or co-conspirators, foreign or domestic, right. so that uh, as to foreign contacts, of course, that's part of why we want to get access Correct. to the uh, encrypted messages, because um, that might tell us whether he'd been in contact with somebody. Thank you. Um, let's talk about motive. Uh, I know the FBI has taken, the, taken a lead role in investigating the assassination on, on President Trump. Uh, your team has uh, searched the shooter's phone, uh, conducted countless interviews, then extensive research into his motives. As of today, July 24, 2024, do you and your team know the motive of the shooter or have any idea on what could have driven it? Well, no and have any idea are two, two very different things. Okay. Um, we do not know the motive. Um, that is obviously one of the central questions in our investigation. Uh, and it's been very frustrating to us that a lot of the usual kind of low-hanging fruit places that we would find that uh, have not yielded uh, significant clues uh, about his motive. Okay. Having said that, uh, we have seen indications that he was interested in public figures. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that in the period um, around July 6th leading up to July 13th, uh, he does seem to have become very focused on this particular rally and former President Trump. But exactly what his thought process was in doing that, uh, that's something that's still very much under investigation. I want to make something clear to the American people to try to help out what motive could be. Uh, and again, it's not my job to steer it, but here are some of my thoughts. Uh, I'm not sure about motive either, specifically, but I can tell you that after this assassination attempt, people on both sides have said that both parties need to tone down the rhetoric. Uh, but recently, just on Monday, in fact, President Biden called into the Harris campaign event and said that President Trump was a threat to democracy. Just take a look behind me at, this fo at these photos. This is a magazine cover of the New Republic from June 2024, published just one month before the assassination attempt on President Trump. In a tweet explaining the cover, the New Republic, the, the New Republic said this, today we at the New Republic think we can spend this, this election year in one of two ways. We could spend it debating whether Trump meets the nine or 17 points that define fascism, or we could spend it saying he's damn close enough and we'd better fight. We unreservedly choose the latter course. Uh, sir, I, I know you said that the FBI doesn't have a clear motive yet, and you've, you've explained that, but in your professional experience as an investigator, do you think that language like this could radicalize someone to engage in political violence? I certainly understand the point of the question. What I would tell you is that, uh, respectfully, uh, I, I don't think it's appropriate for me as FBI director to be characterizing or engaging in public commentary on specific people's rhetoric, and that's because uh, it's not that I don't understand why you're raising the question, but I'm saying that in my role, I have to be very careful to make sure we speak through our work and we speak through our cases and our intelligence products, not the FBI director uh, chiming in in the public square on different people's uh, public, you know, political commentary. I understand. For the record, uh, there was an assassination attempt on an American president, and I will be asking these same questions even if it were President Biden. And my message to the American people is that we need to do better. 
I get back the rest of my time. And thank you for being here, sir. I know it's been a very long day.